Good morning, Floss Tube. Hi, I'm Tamara. I am PD Stitcher here on YouTube and over on Instagram. And this is my channel about cross stitch. Um, happy Easter. Today is Easter Sunday if you celebrate Easter. Otherwise, it's just April 4th, um, 2021. And it is about 10 o'clock in the morning. Nice and sunny and chilly was not expecting chilly for easter this year i was kind of hoping it would be warm but it's supposed to get warm again here in south carolina this coming week so uh, you know, we're, we're hoping for warmer weather i'd like springtime weather to come the last couple of mornings it's been in the 30s so it's been a little cold for the end of march beginning of april um, i am filming a little later in the morning than i usually do um, usually it's first thing in the morning, but this morning we went to the earliest Easter service at my church um, and we just got home, got changed. Obviously, I did not wear a t-shirt to church, um, but it's chilly and I did wear a sundress type thing because you know, it's Easter and I wanted to change into something warmer and more comfortable. Um, for those of you who are new, welcome. Stick around if you happen to like what you see and you want to stay and become one of my floss to be friends uh, hit the subscribe button um, if you are returning welcome back thank you for staying and hanging out with me each week um, I've gotten fairly consistent in, in doing this every week uh, there may be a couple weeks in the near future where I will miss a Sunday life. Um, I'll talk about that more towards the end when I get to the life part of this, but um, life life may interrupt some sun, some Sunday posts, or I may be doing them on Saturday or Monday. We'll see. But let's see, what do we have today? I have my notes, so if you see me look down, I'm just looking at my notes. Um, I have a finish. Um, we're going to talk about how March Mayhem wrapped up, um, some whip go goals for March and now for April and um, some plans and some shout outs. I have no haul. I've, I've been trying to be really, really good. I think the last few videos I've only shown maybe the fabric of the month and a little bit of haul that I got when I had um, some gift cards and I just spent that. I've been saving up trying to save up using spending um, on stitchy stuff until I could start planning for mania, which I'll talk about more in my plans. So, so let's talk about March Mayhem. It wrapped up, obviously, because we're now in April. Um, if you're new here, I'll give you a brief recap of how I did Mayhem. And for those of you who aren't familiar, March Mayhem was a brand new Facebook group created this year by Cheryl McKinney of Tranquil Stitches. Um, it was basically just a way to encourage cross-stitchers to kind of push themselves, do something out of the norm, you know, change things up. So, you know, cross-stitch should be fun. It shouldn't be dull. It shouldn't be monotonous. Um, you can be monogamous and work on one piece all the time, but it shouldn't be monotonous. And just be boring so um, this year what I decided to do was I did a bracket system like March Madness basketball for the NCAA and pitted some of my whips against each other I started with 16 projects before March and had those voted on to get them down to eight which I worked on one of those each day for the first eight days of March then pitted those against each other voted on and um, got them narrowed down to four. Those four got two days of work, pitted those against each other, narrowed down to two. Those two got three days of, of stitching, then pitted those last two together, and the winner got the rest of the month. <laughs> and the winner was Gingerbread Hollow from the Victoria Sampler. And it was, I'm glad this one won. 
overall. I wouldn't have been glad for any of them, but this one was small enough that I was able to completely finish it, including the beads and the buttons. So I started this December 24th, 2020, and finished it this past week, March 29th. If you, as you can see, you have the beads and the buttons. Um, I posted this as a finish on my Instagram account. And then I looked at the picture and noticed my snowman had no eyes or nose. So I had to go back and fix that. And so now it is officially finished. All of the back stitching is done, including the nose and the mouth and the eyes on the snowman. This part right here was supposed to have a round button put in the middle of that, which made absolutely no sense to me because it's a heart. It's not round. And the round button would have kind of taken away from the heart. So I left it empty. I like it better that way. But I like the little round buttons in the little round spaces, just not where the heart was. So this is done. And... I'm sorry, apparently I'm losing my mind. I think I have not said this. If I have, I'm sorry, you'll just hear it again. This was a 32 count Winterbrook from Under the Sea Fabrics. And so this was my finish. And like I said, I finished it on March 29th, which gave me two days left in the month. And I had done one of my Whip Go Goals for March, but I still had 2,000 stitches to do in Cardinal in the Snow. That was the second March Whip Go that was pulled. And if you're not familiar with Whip Go, it is the brainchild of Jessie Marie from Jessie Marie Does Stuff. Um, it's also a group on Facebook. I will link all of these in the description box below. If you want to go join, go check it out, go see you know, what it's all about. I will link these in the box below. Um, but every month, so WhipGo is a, it's like a bingo board. WhipGo bingo, we call, those of us in the cross stitch world call works in progress whips, W-I-P, works in progress. And so instead of bingo, it's WhipGo. It's a 25 square grid, five by five, like a bingo board with a free space in the middle. Some people put goals in the free space. I did not, I made it a free space. So she pulls two each month, except for the month that she pulls the free space. And she did that in January. So there were three numbers pulled in January, two in February, two in March. One of the ones in March I had finished much earlier in the month. And then I still had 2,000 stitches to finish on Cardinal in the Snow. This is what Cardinal in the Snow looks like. It is by X Squared Cross Stitch on Etsy. And I've shared this before and I've said before, but if you're new, you wouldn't have heard it, obviously. I've had a lot of people who tell me they love this pattern. They ask me where they can find it. I tell them they go to Etsy. They don't see it because it's no longer on her Etsy store. She does still have an Etsy store, and I will... Try to remember to link her store below, in the description box below. I can't guarantee anything because I'm not the designer. My suggestion, if you really like the pattern, reach out to her and ask. The worst that can happen is she says no, she's not going to sell it to you. But she may say, sure, here, you know, here's, here's how you can buy the pattern from me. Because it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, so I had to, one of my goals was 2,000 stitches on that. And during March Madness, it made it to the first round. And so I got about 520 stitches in the first round on it. So I had another 1,500-ish to go. Well, it didn't win, and it didn't move on to the second round, so I still had 1,500 stitches to do. So I decided March 30th and 31st, since I had finished my Mayhem winner, I would work on it. And I'm not going to show it yet. I did get the 2,000 stitches. I actually didn't get the 2,000 stitches until April 1st, which is fine. The Whip Go goals are year-long goals. I try to get each goal done in the month it's called, but if I don't, I don't. I have all year to do it. 
Well, then she also called, Jesse Marie also called the April numbers before last weekend. And the first number was a page finish on Cardinal in the Snow. So I spent 30th, the 31st, and then the first, the second, and the third. <laughs> Today is the fourth. The first, the second, and the third, working on Cardinal in the Snow so that not only could I get 2,000 stitches, which got me not quite all the way to the end of the page. I think I had about 600 stitches left to get a page finish. So I now have, and I park, so I've got hanging threads. I have a page finish. I now have two pages done out of 32. Only 30 left to go. Yeah. This is a long-term project, as you can see. I'm just still up here <laughs> in this background. So, so now this has a page finish and I will put this away and get out one of my other um, full coverage and try to rotate them. I can't work on multiple full coverage at the same time. Um, I just can't. It overwhelms me and I can't focus. So I'll pull out a different one until I get a page finish on that and then rotate through. I only have three full coverage that have been started and are in progress. I have a fourth one I would like to start. I don't know when I'm going to do that. I don't know when I'm going to start it. Not anytime soon. Probably not in the next couple of months. When I say anytime soon, I mean like in the next week, next month. Um, probably in the next six months I will start it, but not right now. Um, but so Cardinal and Snow is getting a vacation for a little bit. It'll go back in its box um, where I keep them nice and stored so that they don't get all dusty and crusty. And I'll pull out a new one. And literally those two projects are the only two that I've worked on since last week when I filmed so this is short. <laughs> I knew this was going to be short. It's Easter Sunday. I've got a lot going on. I've got a ham in the oven, so it's smelling really, really good in my house. It's got another couple hours to go and um, like an hour and a half-ish in the oven and then sit out, let it rest while I cook everything else. My girls are helping. We um, One of my girls made potato salad yesterday. It's in the refrigerator. We got homemade macaroni and cheese that my youngest is going to make. So some asparagus in the air fryer, which y'all, the air fryer, oh my goodness. So my husband bought me one for Christmas and I'd heard, you know, good things about them. Okay. You know, I wasn't I was excited to get one, but it wasn't something that, you know, I had to have. So I'm glad I have one. Well, yesterday, so in the potato salad, it's it's a it's baked potato salad and um, it's got cheese and sour cream and bacon. Well, I am do not do a good job with bacon on the stove top. I burn myself with the grease, so I don't I just don't do it. So I've always done it in the oven. And it never got as crispy as I liked. So we did it in the air fryer yesterday for the first time. Oh my goodness. It is the crispiest bacon ever. So I told my husband, I was like, if I don't use the air fryer for anything but bacon, it was worth it. <laughs> because it was nice and crispy and easy to crumble to put in the potato salad. So very, I'm very much looking forward to the potato salad this year because this will be the crispiest bacon that we've had in it. It should, it should have a different texture and flavor for it. And I'm very, very excited for it. That was a tangent, wasn't it? Wow. Um, this is a channel about cross stitch, but every now and then I throw in just random life rambles. So, um, but I know it, if you're like me, I enjoy watching floss tubes where they share a little bit about their lives. Obviously I don't, it's not my business to know everybody's details about their lives, you know, intimate details. If, if they want to share them, that's good. That's them. I'm probably not going to share the most intimate <laughs> details of my life. There's a lot of crazy going on. I have five kids and a husband. There's a lot going on all the time. And if I just rambled about all of the stuff in my life, wow, this would be hours. <laughs> 
But um, I like getting to know y'all. I like getting to know other floss tubers. I want y'all to get to know me because this is supposed to be a, a relationship between me and you and me when I watch other floss tubers and them. I don't have stitchy friends in real life. I don't know people in my town who stitch. Outside this wall right here, I have no one that stitches. My kids are not interested, which is fine. They have their things. So I don't have any stitchy friends in real life. Um, and because of our, well, even before COVID, because of COVID, I'm not going to retreats because there are none. And I, Zoom is hard for me. I, I am a huge introvert <laughs> and Zoom is hard for me. Um, I feel awkward. If, if you if you are out there and you can't relate, <laughs> tell me something to help me feel better about going on Zoom meetings with people I don't know <laughs> that I've never met before. Um, when I go in, I've tried a couple of times in doing a virtual you know, Zoom with other stitchers and it's hard for me to jump into a conversation. I feel like I feel like I don't know what to say or I say the wrong thing or I'm afraid to say the wrong thing and it's just hard. So I don't, I know um, a couple of the groups that I'm in do stitching, you know, virtuals every now and then and I just, I don't know, I, I want to join because I want to meet other people and, and chat and, and it's just hard because I'm me and I'm awkward and you know, <laughs> I embrace that sometimes. I I acknowledge it all the time. I know I'm me and I'm awkward and that's okay. It's just, it does make those virtual meetups a little bit more difficult for me because I struggle. So that's just me. Okay. So plans. Wow. That was a lot of, I rambled and then I rambled about rambling. So, you know, again, that's me and I'm awkward. Okay. Plans. So, April plans. The other, I've already met, met the first what go goal, which was a page finish on Cardinal Isn't it? Wow. Got one down and we're only on the fourth. The second whip go goal was to finish five animals in Advent Animals, which is a Advent calendar with 25 animals. I did not bring them in here because I'm trying to keep my dining room kind of cleaned up so that we can eat in here today. Um, so I didn't bring all that stuff in. Um, I'll share them next week because I'll be working on them this week. But there's 25. They're free patterns from Brooks Books Publishing. And um, my goal for this month is just to do five. I have seven completed, which means math-wise I have 18 to go. Five will get me closer. Um, and most of all of them I've started. I started one a day um, during Christmas in July last year. So I have them all started. My heat just kicked on. My heat just kicked on, y'all. It's April. It's Easter, and my heat just kicked on. So I apologize. I know it will be a little loud. I'll try to talk a little louder. I did have a comment this week from one of my previous videos um, back before I got the device that I'm filming on now that said I talk softly. I do talk softly mostly because I'm usually filming when everybody's sleeping. Um, even though they don't sleep in the room or any of the rooms near where I am. My husband's above me. He sleeps like a log. He probably can't even hear me. Um, but I do talk softly um, when sometimes. <laughs> when everybody's awake, I don't. I'm a, I can be loud. But um, I'll try to talk a little louder because the heat just kicked on. So I'll be working on the Advent animals. I should be able to finish two or three this week because, like I said, they've all been started and they're small. They don't, they maybe take three days total of stitching. And they each have had one already. So hopefully I'll have a couple more little finishes to show you next week. So that's one goal, one plan. Um, Words to Live By from Tiny Modernist. Um, I started that, that's my new year, new start. I've been trying to do one block a month. There are 13 blocks, which means obviously it might take me a little more than one year to finish. Because of mania, and I know 
mania, I'll be doing something different every day and Words to Live By isn't one of those and I'll talk about that and what I'm actually going to be doing in a minute, but Words to Live By won't be one of those. So I'm hoping to finish two blocks this month so I can get an April block and a May block already done before Mania. Which brings me to my Mania plans. I, after I finished um, the page yesterday on Cardinal in the Snow, I didn't stitch anymore. Um, I did a lot of planning, putting things together, getting my Mania set up. Um, I have all my projects chosen. I won't be doing, I'll be doing a different thing every day for the first 21 days because it's 2021, but it, they're not going to be 21 new starts. I don't think, I could be wrong. I, I don't, I think I have 15 new starts, but anything that I started last year in Mania that I haven't finished, I'll work on on that day. So if I started something May 1st, last year in 2020 and I haven't finished it, which I haven't, I haven't finished last year's May 1st project, it will get worked on May 1st this year. May 2nd is an open date, it gets a new start. So I have a bunch of new starts that I want to start. Um, I spent yesterday going through and picking fabric and trying to pull flosses. I've got five projects completely kitted I have a bunch that I still need to pull floss for. I have a couple that I need to buy fabric for, and I have two projects that I want to do that I haven't even bought the pattern yet. So this is why I've not had a lot of haul because in the next few weeks, I will probably have a lot of haul. I'll have a lot of floss, I'll have some fabric, and I'll have a couple of patterns so that I can get started for May. Shout outs. Um, I forgot to do a shout out last week. I'm sorry. Um, I know I like it when other people shout out other floss tubers because I get to learn about new floss tube people. New to me. Not, they may not be new to floss tube, but they're new to me. Um, so this week I want to shout out the patient stitcher. Um, she, uh, Oh my gracious, I watched her video, her last, her latest video a couple weeks ago. I think it was her latest. She may have one that she, if she's done one in the last week, I'm behind. I am very behind in my floss tube watching. Um, I, I can't watch them out of order. Like, I can't, I can't watch even like, I can't watch your, a, a specific person's out of order, but I also can't watch them out of order of when all of them in my queue, I can't watch them out of order. So I'm a week behind, about a week behind. So if any, if, if the patient stitcher has had one this week, I haven't seen it, but I watched and she was talking about her whip good goals and she set some lofty goals, um, 5,000 stitches for a project in a month. That's a lot. I. I probably do that much but not on one project because maybe I'm just not able to focus I'm impressed <laughs> but she said uh, for one month she had her Mirabilia project on there in two different spots and I have several that are on there in two different spots like Cardinal and Snow I had one for 2001 for a page finish well she had them in two different spots and they both were pulled so she had 10,000 stitches to do on that mirror and when she showed how much progress she had done it was gorgeous oh my gracious her project was so gorgeous i love watching floss tubers who stitch on mirrors because i don't know if i'm brave enough to do one i love them they're beautiful I don't know if I could do one. There's a lot of beading. Now I did some beading. Um, I put some beads in that gingerbread hollow. So I, I actually have done some beading now. And it wasn't hard. I thought it would be a lot harder. But there weren't that many beads. <laughs> there were maybe 50 beads. And some of those mirrors have hundreds of beads. So I love watching floss tubers who do mirrors. They make me want to do one. And maybe one day I will feel confident enough to try one. 
And then the other one I want to shout out is Sarah King. And I will also link both of these in the description box below. Sarah King from Our Stitching Kingdom. Um, I first found her, I've actually been watching her floss tubes for a while. I first found her because of homework videos. She was in a homework video with Sammy J from Sammy J Stitches. Um, and so I, I saw her in that and bumped over and, and started watching her. And she also does mirrors and some other really, really neat projects. She started, um, I believe it was her and somebody else, and I can't remember who, and I'm so sorry. They started this thing called the Under 1000 Subs Club. And um, they've been shouting out floss tubers with under a thousand people subscribed to their, their floss tube channel. Well, Sarah doesn't have a thousand, so I wanted to shout her out because she's in the under 1,000 subs club, and y'all, if you're not following her, if you're not subscribed to her and watching her videos, go check her out. Um, she does some lovely, lovely work. She's um, She's got a little girl named Alice, and she also does a lot of Alice in Wonderland projects, and she just, you know, She's just a really sweet, fun floss tuber to watch, so I encourage you to go check her out, too. Life. I, I said this was going to be short. Wow, we're almost at 30 minutes. <laughs> I've rambled a lot today. So I said that, you know, I might not be able to film every week on Sundays for the next few weeks. Um, this week is spring break for the schools here, um, so we don't have any any soccer this weekend for my daughter's travel team. There's no soccer this week for the school team. There's no track this week for the school team as far as meets. Um, there may be some practices. Um, I know my daughter's travel soccer team has practice this week, so we still have stuff. But next week, things go back into full force, and next Sunday, I know she has a soccer game, youngest has a soccer game um, on Sunday. And we, she plays on a team that's not located in our town. Her, her team is an hour and a half away. That's their home base. So even for her, a home game for her means we have to travel, um, which is fine. We, she loves the girls on her team. We love the club that she's in. My husband coaches in that club. So we don't mind. Um, it, you know, it's a long drive sometimes, <laughs> but it's, it's, a nice, it's nice for her. It's been a great thing for her. So she has games the next few Sundays. Um, we also have track meets, big track meets coming up for, for my daughter who does track. And then that's going to take us through April. Those are every weekend. We have something every weekend in April, um, either soccer or track or both. And then in May, we have track meets. Um, my twins are graduating high school one weekend in May. Um, my twin's birthday and my son's birthdays are all in May, so weekends are going to be tough. So if I'm not here on a Sunday, I apologize in advance because I'm going to try and film on Sunday mornings, but I can't always guarantee it. If we're traveling and I get rushed trying to get ready to leave, I can't always get everything put together to film the floss tube. I'll try and get it done on a Saturday. If I'm going to be busy on Sunday, but a lot of times our Saturdays and Sundays are both packed, so I'll see. I hope I can still be fairly regular. If not, I'll, I'll pop in when I can. And so I want to leave you with a quote. Um, if you're new here, I end each video with a quote to encourage, inspire. Obviously, they're not my quotes. <laughs> but they're, they're quotes other people have said that are encouraging and inspiring. So this one's from Thema Davis. Um, it says, saying yes to happiness means learning to say no to things and people that stress you out. And that is something I have been working on for many years. I'm not good at saying no. I struggle with when people ask me to do something. I struggle telling people, no, I'm sorry, I can't do that. I've gotten much better because sometimes to be, to say yes to, to happiness or to joy or to just being able to focus on the things that we're supposed to focus on, it means we have to say no to something else. 
It doesn't mean saying no to something good might mean saying yes. We're able to say yes to something even better. So, y'all, I hope that I haven't you know, rambled too much. And I hope you all have a great week. Stay happy. Stay ha healthy. Keep stitching. Bye.